Hey everyone, we've had some requests for us to demonstrate how to use events and macros uh, in combination with Net Remote Dynamic. So to do that we're going to do um, a, uh, a, an IR profile to, to a controller cable box through a PIR1, hook that um, into the IR devices, create actions from that, hook events to it, and control it from uh, Net Remote. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but we'll go through it step by step. So the first thing we're going to do is, uh, is bring up Girder. I have done that already here. And we need to see the Device Manager window. Now you can bring that up by clicking File, SR View, and then Device Manager. This window comes up. The, the next thing you do is enable the IR Devices plugin. Click on this little puzzle piece, find the IR Devices plugin, and double click it. You'll notice that it has appeared here. So let's create a device here in the IR Devices plugin for the cable box. And we'll just name it that cable box. And let's import these codes from the web and send it out to the front of the attached PIR1. So here you go. So the front, and we click Next. We look for Comcast, Cable Box. Sure, that's all good. And when you open this up now, you'll see that we have all of these um, buttons available that will now control our cable box. So if you were to point the PIR1 at the cable box, highlight, say, channel down or channel up, and click on the event button here. This is uh, the, the test button. It will send out the IR signal. So this way you can test real quick if what you just did worked or not. If it didn't work, check that you have the output set correctly here. So in this case, we want it to come out of the front, the glassy part of the PIR, but that might not be always the case. You might have a stick on the meter. In that case, you want to pick either back one or back two. So now that we have this done, the next part to do is say we want to change to channel 32 because that's where you know, whichever channel you like to watch is on. And if you were do, to do this on a remote, you would have to press 3 and 2. So that's what we're going to have Girder uh, emulate here. So if you could look at the main section of Girder, this is the action tree. This is where all the, the, the actions get configured and actions are pressing a button, turning on a light, uh, all, all those kinds of things. And in this case we're going to do press a button on a remote. And not just one button but two in a row. And to be able to do that, so we create a new, I'll start from the beginning here, we create a new uh, girder file here which happens by clicking on this little button here. It names it new file. Let's, let's give it a more useful name so we can find what we're doing later. Comcast controls or cable box. Cable box controls. And here channels. So let's say that the, the channel we want to control is discovery channel. And for the sake of this demo, let's say that, that to get there, the number is 32. So what we do here is we go into the device manager where we have this, the, the, defined the, the controls the, for the cable box and grab three and drop it right on top of discovery channel. And two and drop that on top of discovery channel again. Um, this little button I pressed earlier, that is a macro. So anything you drop on the macro gets executed sequentially. So first what will happen is it will execute the button press 3 and then button press 2. Now one thing that we need to do here is put a little weight in between. Goethe will do this as quick as it can, but the cable that will probably confuse the cable box. So what we need to do is put a little pause in between and a pause you can find under flow control. So here in available actions, flow control, there's weight. 
So we're going to try and drop that right in between there for you. Hit it just right, a line appears, and you can drop it in between. Typically a weight of about 500 milliseconds, that's a half a second, is enough. Don't forget to hit apply here, otherwise it will not remember that. So now we have this set up to, if this macro triggers, it sends three out of the PIR front, it waits half a second, and it sends two. So if you want to test this, point your PIR1 at the TV or the cable box and press run. Or you can right click and hit run as well. And if you look at the PIR, the little light on it, the little green light on the back, will flash two times. So now we've got a macro that'll change the TV to Discovery Channel. The next step is, is to have inside Net Remote a way to press one button that does these things in a, uh, this, this sequence for us. So let's let's bring up Net Remote Dynamic. Just under View, Net Remote Dynamic. And as you can see, I have some stuff set up here already. Let's see, make it a, a good spot here. But we we'll. We'll clean this up here real quick because none of this is really useful for us right now. So cleaning up. When you click on the little girder icon, it goes into edit mode and you can just you know delete what you don't want. And I don't want any of these bits here right now. So with that being cleaned up now, what we need to add is a event button. And when you click on the uh, girder icon at the bottom here, this little menu scrolls out. Um, clicking on the plus here gets us a menu that shows us all the things that we can add. And we want to add an event button at the top here. So let's do that. Let's see what happens when we click the event button. So hit apply. And keep an eye on the background here. I'm going to pull up girder for a second and click on the logger tab. And you'll see that stuff has happened here. Let me pull it open a bit. I'm going to clear the log. When you right click here, you can clear the log and bring that remote back up. And I'll keep an eye on the log when I click it. See how events appear there? And the name of the event is currently none. If you look back at that remote and go into edit mode, we'll find that same word none right here. So that's the default, but that's really not what we're going to use. We want to make this something representative of the event that we're trying to do, of the action that we're trying to do. So in this case, we're trying to change to Discovery Channel. So we'll just name it Discovery Channel Event. And it is freeform. You can name this whatever you want, but name it something useful so you can figure it out later um, what you've done. Caption, of course, event button is not very useful, so let's also name that the discovery channel. There you go. I really should get paid for this by discovery channel for this advertisement, but there you go. Let's apply it again, clicking on this little green check mark button, and let's see what happens to the events now when we click it now. Aha! The event that we just typed, that event name, has appeared. But the PIR1 is currently not even sending. So we just have events coming in, but Goethe does not know what to do with that event. So the next step is to grab this event. I'm just going into the logger, grab the event, and drag it and drop it on top of the macro. And this is important, drop it on top of the, uh, the macro. It, it'll allow you to drop it on the actions, but that's not what you want. If you drop it on the action, in this case, nothing will happen. But on the macro, it will hook it to the end here, as you can see. And next time we now click in that remote on, um, if the next time we click in that remote on that button, Gerda knows that because we hooked this to the macro to trigger these three actions in a row. So if we go back here to that remote, actually pull the logger up, go back to that remote, we click on it, we'll see some different things happen there. 
So we saw that the event came in and that some actions triggered. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. So by hooking this button here now, by, by inserting this event button, we sent an event to Girder, which is the discovery channel event here. We hooked that event to the macro we created earlier. The macro itself sends three, wait, two. So this whole chain now hooks it all together, allowing us to control the TV by not having to press the buttons over and over. Like you could, you could here also press three and two, but for some people that is not as easy as just clicking this, and it's much more convenient. So go with this, and that will make your life a whole lot easier. Thanks for listening. I hope this was useful. As always, give us feedback of what you would like to see in these videos, and we're happy to put them up. Thanks.